Are you blessed or are you cursed? And can you tell the difference? Hi, it's Barry Phelps with 10 Minute Tour, day number two of Torah portion, Ray A. We're back in Deuteronomy, Devarim, chapter 11. One more time, let's go to verse 26 and focus on the rest of the verse. See, I'm setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing when you obey the commands of Yahweh your Elohim, which I command you today, and the curse if you do not obey the commands of Yahweh your Elohim, but turn aside from the way which I command you to go after other mighty ones which you have not known. So how do you know how you're living? Are you blessed or are you cursed? There is a misnomer. There is a, a, a faulty understanding of one who lives under a curse in regards that some would say, well, if I am a Christian, if I am a follower of Torah, I cannot be under a curse. It's just automatic that way. It's not the title that you claim for yourself. It is the manner of your walk that determines whether or not you can have a curse place on your life. To be very foundational here, Yah has already determined where the blessing is and where the curse is. It's already been pronounced. And so knowing then that all power belongs to Yah. There is no power that does not have a foundation or uh, is, is not sourced in him. All power, what is perceived as good and as bad, all come from the Most High. Whatever power that we that we relegate to or define as coming from the hands of Hasatan, our adversary, is any ability that Yah has permitted him to walk in. Um, I heard a, a wise uh, writer one time, and I've been recently reading this little book, if I can get it on screen here. This is from Francis Frangipan. Uh, exposing witchcraft. I don't know if this is still in print or not. The discernment series. It's it's a thin little book. It's not very not very big. Uh, he made a statement one time that the serpent was given permission or or given a curse that you will eat dust. What is man made of? We are created from the dust of the earth. Where then we walk according to our flesh, according to our dust nature, our identity as a mud person, therein is where Hasatan is able to devour us, to consume us. He has been brought down to the realms of darkness. If we choose to walk in darkness, that's where he's at. That's where his his abilities lie. It's in, in the ability to walk in the light that causes him problems. Let's look at some scripture. Foundationally, again, in the book of Numbers, the Midbar, chapter number 23, when Balaam is being set up and encouraged to curse Israel so that the Midianites can defeat them militarily, in verse number 8, Balaam says, how do I curse whom El has not cursed? How do I rage in whom Yahweh has not raged? So if we're not walking in an arena where the curse of Yah on sin is found, there is no curse that can be levied against us. Your greatest defense is, against witchcraft and cursing and darkness is to walk in the light as Yeshua is in the light, to walk after the heart and the character of Yeshua, walking obediently. And that's what we're supposed to be striving for anyway. Therein is your defense against a curse. If we go then to the book of Psalms, chapter 109, 
In verse 17 and 18, it says, He also loved cursing, so let it come to him. And he did not delight in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he put cursing on as with his garment, so let it enter into his inward parts like water, into his bones, and like oil. When we open our mouths to curse, we are participating in darkness. You may not like somebody, you may not appreciate their demeanor or their approach to things or how they treat you or how they treat the ones that you love. But to open your mouth and speak cursing toward them is then to invite that same cursing to come back to yourself. That's why our mouths are our own greatest adversaries, greater than the powers of darkness, principalities, greater than Hasatan himself. It's our own tongue and our own mouth that is our worst enemy. When we fail to control our tongue, we fail to control our defense system as well. So watch them words. In the book of Proverbs, chapter number 3, and verse number 33, the curse of Yahweh is on the house of the wrong, but he blesses the home of the righteous. Blessing resides where righteousness is found. The curse is found where unrighteousness is found. It's very, very basic and very simple as that. Uh, let's go to the book of John. In the book of John, chapter number 3, beginning with verse 18, Yeshua said this, He who believes in him is not judged, but he who does not believe is judged already. There again, the curse has already been pronounced upon those that are unrighteous. Because he has not believed in the name of the only brought forth son of Elohim, and this is the judgment that the light has come into, into the world, and men love darkness rather than the light, for their works were wicked. Everyone who is practicing evil, evil matters, hates the light, does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But the one doing the truth comes to the light, so that his works are clearly seen, that they have been wrought in Elohim. Those who walk in darkness, those who operate in cursing, those who are under the curse, prefer to dwell where things are hidden and where things are cloaked over, covered over, masked over, lied about, schemed on, just so that you know, nothing is seen. And it's amazing that those that are honorable want their works to be seen. One hand may not know what the other hand is doing, but the effect of what is righteous and good, they're wanting it to see it promoted and others blessed. Here's another, another clue. Those who walk in cursing and in darkness are self-absorbed, and it's all about them. Those who walk in light and in righteousness and in blessing, they are more about promoting and encouraging others. Where is one's focus? Finally, in the book of Romans, chapter number 1, and verse number 18, For the wrath of Elohim is revealed from heaven against all wickedness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Later in this chapter, they, the, the writer Rashul is talking about those who change truth change the nature of the one who is truth into their preferred version, and then they themselves receive reprobate minds, become corrupted in their relationships, and receive due recompense even in their own bodies. Our world around us is indeed oftentimes polluted in its mind, corrupted in the DNA of our spirit, and sometimes even in our bodies. It is because we choose to walk in darkness and cursing. Those who practicing, practice cursing each other, their bodies will begin to wear down. Witchcraft is a terrible business. It causes an early aging syndrome. But those who walk in righteousness, in light, and in purity, and in blessing, are promised long life and great reward. Be rewarded today. Watch them words. We'll see you tomorrow. 
Tzadish Shalom.